Alright, let's see. So this is a video uh, kind of explaining the uh, how to remove the uh, feed um, the feed mechanism or the the clutch uh, feed handle and collar the feed handle collar. Um, disassemble all this and then pull these bearing caps out to remove the head from the yoke here. It's uh, it's kind of deceptive how this thing, if you've never taken it apart, it's, it took me a week to get all this apart because uh, um, the collar was absolutely locked to this piece it would not move at all and uh, that took probably a week to get off this thing sat out in my neighbor's yard or neighbor's driveway for probably 10 years and so it was rusted and uh, uh, not in the greatest shape this is the old collar for the handle um, and it was it was absolutely locked to this piece here and this is the um, part of the clutch mechanism uh, for the power feed on the quill. I got this thing separated just a little bit with a bearing uh, separator that you know basically pushes in from either side and I got enough space in here um, I, or I got a little bit of space in there but I could never get it off while it was on the machine I tried to map uh, map gas torch you know a little propane torch with the map tank on it and I could never get it hot enough to to do anything and so uh, I used my oxyacetylene torch, which I kind of didn't want to use, um, just because I didn't know what all was in here, or what might be damaged, and all that stuff um, if I heated it too much. But anyway, because um, I was having so much trouble, it took me like a week to get this thing off. Uh, because I was having so much trouble, I ended up getting out the oxyacetylene torch and I heated this piece up. Uh, it was pretty hot, uh, glowing red. And so when I did heat it up, uh, it pulled right off the shaft. I, I think it was locked to the shaft, but the cone can also have quite a grip on it as well because that that's a clut the clutch mechanism um, can can actually grip it pretty well too so once I heated this thing up this basically just pulled right off um, so this <clears throat> Uh, collar or cap, <clears throat> bearing cap, will not come out of the yoke here um, with the male portion of the cone clutch. There's a socket head cap screw, I think it's actually a shoulder bolt, um, right here. And then there's a locating pin down here. <clears throat> Um, and then, <clears throat> so you take, you pull out the shoulder bolt, um, and then, um, 
this should come off pretty easily because there's a whole bunch of springs on the back side of this. I think there's five or six springs on the back side of this pushing that cone out. Um, and that was, that's what gives the clutch, you know, tension. Um, as you, you know, turn this in, um, that pushes a pushes the female portion of the clutch into the male portion of the clutch that is backed up by springs. What I ended up doing once I got the, the this part of the clutch off um, and I had enough space to get some plates in here between the two I was able to push um, the clutch out of the collar and uh, that I did with I did that with a, a hydraulic press a small hydraulic press made a new handle for it this is tool steel it's not hardened and then this was some uh, steel that I had laying around uh, and uh, you know put a hole through it put a uh, a new pin in it and so it slides on here pretty well if I get the handle out of the way and locks in you know all the indexing holes around the, around the uh, the female portion of the cone clutch so on this side um, you got your clamp bolts that go in there and cap, uh, cap head screws um, and then one of these holes on this side as well is threaded um, mine was so uh, weathered and rusted and everything that I ended up tapping I think yeah I ended up tapping the, one of the other um, uh, holes in the in this cap. Uh, the other thing about this is this cap won't come out if this worm is still inside here. There's not enough clearance. So to do that there's a little set screw right here and you back that out um, and then this worm uh, if you lock the caps in, this worm should back out um, just by turning it. <clears throat> There's a locating pin right here for the cap. Um, inside here is the uh, return spring for the for the quill. Uh, and uh, from what I can tell, most of these uh, return springs are bad for the early series of 602. Um, mine was broken um, and then also cracked in two other places. Uh, so I couldn't reuse that spring and there's I can't find one online to purchase. Um, you could probably have one made, but I ended up um, purchasing a Bridgeport one, which is smaller. This this is I think this head's much heavier. Um, the quill and everything is much heavier than a Bridgeport, um, and I. I think the, the spring is like an inch and a quarter wide. Um, there's another pin inside this cap, but there's a pin in here. The spring hangs on one uh, one side of the the uh, of the pin, and the pin is attached to the head, and then it coils around down to the shaft that runs all the way through the head 
and it's attached to that shaft. So that's that's your uh, quill return spring. And uh, so the Bridgeport one is much lighter than the um, uh, the original spring that was in here, but it does take a significant amount of weight off of the off of the quill. It will not raise the quill by itself though. So um, that's what I did. Um, I can probably give you some more details on that uh, if you need if you need some. But anyway, uh, I hope that helps. Um, good luck.